is my current project going on right now. I've been putting it off for a few weeks. Uh, it's gotten to the point where I can no longer uh, put it off anymore. I've got to fix it. It's, uh, it's my wife's 2009 Volvo S40. The rack of pinion is uh, leaking so bad now, it, it, it literally has got to be fixed. <clears throat> Already broke the lugs free. The 19 millimeter, if you're wondering, 19 millimeter, you get the lugs off if you're not using a lug wrench. been leaking so much oil and everything underneath first thing I'm gonna do before I really get into this I'm gonna take and I'm gonna I'm gonna take and I'm gonna uh, degrease the whole underside of this car so I can work without being completely covered with grease oil whatever <clears throat> I'm gonna take the fender wells out fender well liners out first just so they're out of the way I'm gonna pop the hood and I'm gonna degrease the whole back side of the engine underneath and I'm gonna pressure wash it okay who knows how many times this car has been apart and put back together but there's uh, we've got a Phillips head screwdriver Phillips head screw on the first one then you got a t20 Torx T20 Torx. And these next two. And then we've got up here in the front, got these, use a flathead screwdriver to pop out the push pin. They're not all in here either. I'm missing a few. So they're out. I mean, you got a 10 millimeter socket. Take off the nut that's up here. And once you get that nut, the last one. Unhook it from the inside. Now, of course, I've got the splash pan off underneath already, so um, these are just a bunch of screws to hold the splash pan in. So, pull off one, pull off the other. Fender wells out. Now I've got a little bit more room here, and I can get to the power steering pump uh, on this side. Get to my belts, you know, that's a whole nother project. I'm going to change the belts in it because uh, I think power steering fluid flung onto the belts and uh, making them squeak. So I'm going to take care of that while I'm doing this project. But I can get to more of this now. I'm going to do the other fender well, same way, same screws and push pins and the 10 millimeter nuts. Pull that side out. I'm going to pop the hood. And I'm going to degrease the whole underside of this with some degreaser and then pressure wash it. So that way, I don't end up covered in grease. Got this sad looking can of engine cleaner. It's been laying around my garage forever. It looks like it's been through hell. Uh, it's still squirt, so I'm gonna use it, and then I got this stuff too here. I'm gonna make sure I get it nice and good, get as much of the oil off as possible, and pressure wash it. I'm gonna hit everything I got. Got enough of this stuff laying around.
This is the one nice thing about working on my on top of my trailer as a surface to to do stuff because literally, you know, I'm saving my knees from going up and down. It's kind of like having your own personal car lift. You know, it, it may seem redneck, but I'm not even a redneck. I just work on stuff. So makes it easy to get things done. We got the can of foamy stuff. It's foamy, all right. I got 15 millimeter socket on the nut and break it free. It says not to pound on them unless you plan on if you plan on reusing them, but uh I really don't plan on reusing this one, but still, I'm just gonna shock it free. So, okay, these squeak. All I gotta do is give it a nice little shot. With the nut on, it's probably the easiest. That's free. All right, same thing on this side, 15 millimeter. Break it free. Loosen it up most of the way so it's still, still on the threads. And give it a shot. And then once it's broke free, take the nut off. There's a ton of play on this side. I'm almost a quarter inch of movement. I got myself a 13 millimeter socket and I want to break these all free here. Simple. 
that one. Some of this stuff really doesn't matter what order I take it off. It just has to come off. So we got the mount disconnected, so this frame will be able to drop down free from the engine. This electric line is disconnected here. Um, it's got a heat shield on it. Now while I'm right here, I'm going to use a T20 Torx, and I'm just going to disconnect this holder that's holding these uh, power steering lines to the, to the rack itself. Just kind of working my way around. You know, disconnected everything to get it, get it so it's ready to drop down. Move your way around, disconnecting stuff that's going to be in the way. <clears throat> okay. Drop 
this cross member down. So I got the silicone mounts. I guess they're made out of silicone. They feel like silicone. They don't feel like rubber. Just put a screwdriver in there and kind of pry them off. I use a Phillips head because it's rounder here. I don't want to cut or chafe into them things. I use a Phillips head because it's uh, smooth and round so it doesn't cut or chafe into the, those grommets. Up in here, this bolt runs right through. So we're going to take this out and these on both sides. They re it releases the back side of this uh, cross member. Thirteen millimeter. I didn't say that already. Okay. Those two are out. Now you want to break this bolt free. This is a give me an idea real quick. Thirteen sixteenths. Nothing's going to drop down here because there's still one other main bolt that holds the whole cross member in. So we can take these off. Okay. Keep the bolts together to remember what goes where? Uh, yeah, issues remembering. Refer to the video. Break them free. 13 millimeter. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to get this disconnected from the inside of the car. So, in order to get this disconnected, it's a 10 millimeter socket. This. All right, now you want to hold your steering wheel because you're going to try cranking on it and it's going to move. So. bolt and take it all the way out.
see there's a little bit of Loctite on there. So when you put it back together, you're gonna wanna put a dab of Loctite on it. So, okay, now it's free. And this is part of your collapsible steering column. See how it moves in and out here. In case of a crash, it collapses. The other thing is, as you can see, and this is the reason why I said take the This is a groove here. And that groove that bolt goes through to, to hold it in uh, alignment. All right, we're done inside the car here. There's nothing else to take apart back outside. All right, I'm just gonna slide my jack under here, position it under the subframe so I can take the other two bolts out that hold it in place. Now I may be, I may be um, missing something on uh, disconnecting everything here, but that's why I'm putting a jack under it to support it so I can lower it down slowly and then look around and make sure nothing's going to hang up or. Uh, or any wires are going to get pulled or anything like that, so. Next on to the last two bolts. All right. These two bolts are the last two that hold the subframe in. And uh, pretty easy to get to. 15 millimeter. My jack had creeped down a little bit, which allowed the cross member to come down a little bit of an angle, which was holding the bolt in place. Once I jacked up on it, it dropped the bolt right out. I didn't disconnect the sway bar or links or anything like that. I'm just going to lower it straight down to get an idea what kind of room I have and uh, what else still needs to be disconnected. The power steering line rubber hose here is going to flex. A little bit to allow me some room to come down. I still have to disconnect the line going into the rack. And there's this 
electric line here is connected to the rack that has a plug on the other side of it, underneath the rack. So just go down here, see what moves. Give you a better idea, you can pretty much see the entire rack now to slide it out. A little bit of my jack, it's kind of just hanging here by itself, so I gotta look around and make sure nothing's holding it up. see the back here going this way right here it's a wire connector that goes that the wire goes that way um, other than that we're pretty clear we're, we're hitting here on the axle axle shafts are one of the next things I'm going to do to this thing but uh, the other thing My the uh, rubber exhaust grommets are hitting, keeping it from coming down in that spot. So there's a couple little spots, but once I get it, it should come all the way down. All right, once I get everything to clear, See, there's the the line, and uh, you can see here on you can see there's there's plenty of room in here now to get to the rack, get to the bolts. It'll be out of here in a couple minutes, but. Yeah, you just don't want to damage this line here, this electric line, it'll unplug. And uh, you can drop the rack most of the way down and, you know, I just got to disconnect the, the line, the uh, power steering line going into the rack, and uh, the two bolts that hold the rack in place and the rack will be out of here. Well, it slides right out of the clamp there. It slides right out of the bracket right there. It's not what I wanted to do, but yeah, it give me a little better grip on it. It's a little greasy still. Push that little tab, it comes free. And just don't forget to put it back together when we put it all back in. It's a uh, 10 millimeter, whether you can get a socket or an open end wrench in here like this one. Slid the oil can, that oil catch can underneath of it, in case any power steering fluids leaks out of it. Oh, just need a little wiggle. Come on.
one's free. The other one's stuck. All right. All right. The line's out. It only leaked a little bit. Not too bad. Go this way. No. Let's <laughs> get like a little it flips up. I couldn't see that from where I was at. Two. I think there's only two. Yes, take the two out and find out if there's only two. Um, 10 millimeter bolts. Hold the heat shield in place. Turns. Oh, come on. Two. Taking off this bowl here. There's uh, three bolts that hold the heat shield in place on the power steam rack. Loose. Yeah, fair, I was holding it. Yeah, there it is. It was just stuck to the line. It's 15 millimeter. It's 15 millimeter. Alright, 
50 millimeter that bolts out. So one side of the rack is loose. Over the other side. Right. Same thing. Get in here to the rack. This broke free. Pretty free now. bolts out. I think I got enough body, room between this and the body to squeeze it out so I'm going to push it over that way. Push it to the passenger side to get this over here. I'm going to pull it back. What I'm trying to show here. With the with the cross member pretty much all the way down, Lift up the Just to show you from end to end here, that's the entire rack taken out of the Volvo. Okay, this is the point in the video where I call it intermission basically. The old rack's out and then get ready to put the new rack back in.